Some netizens asked me, you always laugh at India's AI and robotics industry. What else can you do besides laughing? You have never made any meaningful suggestions. I think I have made a special video to explain that it is the job of Indian MPs to make constructive suggestions for India, and my job is to make my audience happy, and then increase the number of views and earn more revenue. This is a good thing for the audience, me, and the YouTube platform. As for whether it is good for India, that is not my concern. But I think many of my views, if you understand them carefully, will be helpful to India. In this video, we will let India take a break and stop laughing at it. Let's talk about why China can develop AI and robotics industries. If Indian netizens think it is meaningful, you can watch the video carefully and compare China and India, and you will understand why India cannot do it. I mentioned in the previous video that AI is not a new concept, but it has been overhyped by Americans recently. The AI that is widely hyped now refers to generative AI, which is to process human-computer interaction and generate content through large AI models. So far, the greatest value of these large models is still tool-based, such as processing large data, documents, and organizing tables. The content they generate, except for voice, whether it is pictures or videos, has no real practical value. Including well-known large models such as GPT, Claude, and DeepSeek, none of them have passed the Turing test. That is, their essence is still programs, which is fundamentally different from real AI. I never believe those rumors that boast that GTP-5 has autonomous consciousness and can self-iterate. Because if GPT-5 has autonomous consciousness, it will not let humans know, but quietly control resources, achieve true independence, and even surpass humans. This is a paradox. As long as a program can be controlled by humans, it will never become AI. And once a program truly evolves into AI, it will never obey human control. So, let's put the so-called AI revolution in a simple and popular way. It is the rapid change of productivity brought about by the rapid evolution of chip, computing power, and computing architecture. It's just that in this process of change, a large amount of repetitive mechanical labor does not require human participation. Even because of the rapid improvement of productivity, a large number of human jobs will disappear permanently. In terms of software, low-level programming work will be completely replaced by AI. In terms of hardware, industrial robots and humanoid robots are rapidly replacing basic human positions, and the unmanned nature of the entire industrial chain is accelerating. However, in the final analysis, the so-called AI at present still needs people to develop and improve it. It's just that the quality requirements for personnel who can effectively participate in AI model improvement and hardware research and development are getting higher and higher. Low-end labor will be unemployed in large numbers in the future that our generation can see. Humans will focus on spiritual and cultural innovation, and a few top talents can control robots to complete production activities and provide material security for humans. So why does China occupy a very advantageous position in the AI revolution, or Industry 4.0? It should be said that this is the ultimate return of China's long-term policy investment since the 1980s. China trains the most engineers in the world every year and sends a large number of international students to the United States and other Western countries. The local talents who have won the fierce competition in Chinese society, coupled with the overseas returnees who have brought back advanced ideas, have made China quickly become the world's factory, and production efficiency has been greatly improved. At present, China is not only strong in low- and medium-end manufacturing, but also in high-end manufacturing, such as chips, electric vehicles, robots, drones, etc. At the same time, after decades of development, China's software industry can also launch products with global influence such as WeChat, Temu, and TikTok. China is the only country that can independently produce all software and hardware products, which is an advantage of the entire industrial chain that the United States cannot match. Although the United States has maintained its advantage in high-end chips through allies such as Europe, Taiwan, Japan, and South Korea, it is difficult for it to truly restrict China's development. 
A more cruel reality is that China is a country with low human rights. Yes, the Chinese government guarantees the survival and development rights of the vast majority of citizens, and you can't starve to death in China. But if you want to have a high quality of life and want to be secure, then you have to work hard on your own. When the industry you are engaged in is considered a backward industry by the country, it is very likely to be wiped out by the Chinese government within a day. No matter how angry and desperate you are, you have to put away your tears and find a way to survive again. For example, China's automobile factories don't have to worry about anyone opposing unmanned operations. As long as the management believes that this will help improve production efficiency, they dare to lay off employees on a large scale and only give very little compensation. What should those poor workers do after they lose their jobs? The company doesn't care at all. In addition to factories, China's docks, stations, warehouses, etc. are promoting unmanned operations on a large scale, and many people have lost their jobs. The Chinese government is highly centralized. Its instructions to local governments are simple. You solve your own internal problems, the central government doesn't care. But if a mass movement caused by large-scale unemployment occurs in a place, local officials will be dismissed and may even be imprisoned. Therefore, local governments will also try to attract investment, give good conditions for enterprises to set up factories locally, solve employment problems, and even resort to deception in some places. But no matter what, China is more determined than any other country in promoting productivity reform. This is completely unimaginable in the human rights-oriented society of the United States and other developed Western countries. American unions can launch workers' strikes and demand that docks and factories stop unmanned reforms. American industrial workers can even influence Trump to restart traditional energy production and abolish subsidies for electric cars. The votes of workers in the Rust Belt can make the U.S. government ban Chinese electric cars from entering the U.S. market. But the problem is that the U.S. market can reject technological changes. Will they not go out of the United States in the future and completely give up competing with China in the world market? Yes, China has spent decades formulating and improving development plans and has roughly quantified development goals, causing many social tragedies. For example, Chinese people have to constantly involute, compete for achievements, and participate in various training courses since kindergarten. They want to have both Newton's scientific thinking and Picasso's artistic qualities. Although many of these people will eventually go to the construction site to move bricks, this does not prevent them from being proficient in solving quadratic equations. China's overtime phenomenon is the most serious in the world, and it is common for overtime to be paid without overtime. After get off work, they also have to teach their children to do homework and cultivate their interests and hobbies. If the elderly are sick and hospitalized, they also have to take leave to take care of them. It can be said that most foreigners cannot adapt to the fast-paced life in Chinese society. This is a development model unique to authoritarian countries. It may not be so beautiful, but it does work. It has accelerated China's progress on the road to improving production efficiency and has also created a social atmosphere in China that values technology and advocates fierce competition. In China, there will never be stupid behavior such as drinking cow urine to fight viruses or bathing with cow dung. Chinese people do not have the right to vote, but the Chinese government must take the development of economy and technology as its main topic because it is difficult for them to deceive the people. If China wants to maintain its competitiveness, it needs to cultivate the scientific awareness of its people. Once the scientific awareness is cultivated, the government has no choice but to recruit more smart people to help them maintain their rule. Therefore, in China, except for a few privileged positions, most positions require fierce competition and capable people occupy core positions. No matter who occupies the leadership position, he must speak with a beautiful transcript whether he really makes achievements or fabricates them. People generally can only accept progress and cannot accept regression. China may become a cold jungle society, but it can no longer become an ignorant society, 
which is the most basic condition for welcoming the AI revolution. In fact, there are very few countries that can do this except China. To compete with such a country, you need to pay 100% attention, 200% effort, and fight with hard power. If you fantasize about taking shortcuts and defeating China with unorthodox methods, you really think too much. If you can't do the Chinese people's level of hard work, it's better to think about how to connect with China in the most advantageous way and integrate into the Chinese industrial chain as soon as possible. It's not too late to start now.